Today in the Boot Guy, we are looking at the 9853 from Carolina. So I'm sure you guys have noticed it's been a really long time since I reviewed a pair of loggers and not only that, a really long time since I reviewed a pair of Carolina loggers, mainly because, well, I did almost everything in their catalog two years ago and so it's been a nice little hiatus from looking at the brand, especially their loggers. But with this new overtime comfort system that they've come up with, I think it's time to start talking about just where they are putting all their energy and time into making loggers comfortable again. All right, so before we get to any of the comfort stuff, let's just run through the simple basics on the boot, just so you guys know what you're looking at, why it's still the same old Carolina, it's durable, it's dependable, everything that makes a Carolina logger important, it still has all that, but with something added to it. So the sole. Full one piece rubber sole, just like you expect from Carolina. It is glued to a wonderful lightweight midsole, and they're not putting a huge amount of that midsole in there. They're using just enough to hold all these pieces together, but it does add a nice little bounce to it. Now, the 9853 is a fully welted logger. There's none of that heel stuff where they kind of glue it in or they try to stitch it down in weird places. No fully welted all the way around. And also what Carolina did is they stitched down the toe. Now, we all know how important this little bit of a stitch to the toe of a logger boot or any heavy duty work boot is because this is where we're gonna kick things. We're gonna peel this toe back from the welt. Even if we're down on our knees working, doing electrical work, doing logging work, doing tree topping work, eventually we're gonna rip this away. So having that extra stitch is really, really important. Now the leather they're calling a Buster Dark Leather. It is a really heavy hand of logger leather. It's what you would expect in a brown leather logger. It's a nice thick leather, heavy duty. You don't have to worry about this stuff kind of wearing out prematurely or stretching prematurely. And I gotta say that the leather is actually adding half the weight to this boot. We're off a logger sole as the other half of the weight. This is some heavy duty leather. So when you pick these things up, you're gonna feel the weight of the boot. Just remember that Heavy boots don't necessarily mean bad boots. You gotta get them on your foot first. So if you're in the shop and you pick this thing up and it feels too heavy to you, please put it on your foot before you make that judgment call. All right, so when you open the boot up and you take a look inside, what you're gonna notice is it's unlined because this is not a waterproof boot, but where Carolina took that extra step and we'll talk about all these extra steps and how they control production of their boots later on, but where they took that extra step is by adding this 3D printed type foam mesh inside the collar. Most of the time, logger boots, you don't get any padding up in here unless they're adding a piece of vinyl, Carolina not vinyl. They're using something that actually wicks moisture away and actually holds its shape. This honeycomb type material is super resilient. It's gonna take you a really long time to flatten this stuff out and break it down. Unlike foam and other materials like that, this EVA bouncy stuff is really, really nice. So look at the tongue. You see that? You see how the tongue is a different material from the rest of the boot? This leather, this soft suede leather, is similar to what you guys who weld, you guys who are wearing FRs or even just welding sleeves, that leather that you'll find in your welding sleeves is the same hand of leather they're using in a tongue. And why are they using it? Because it's more supple, it's more pliable. You can fold it around your foot. You can get a really good fit right out of the box because they took this little extra step and added this different type of material right here in the tongue section. Now the top of the tongue is the heavy duty stuff. They recontinue it up into your ankle. So you're getting that protection up top where you need it, but for the fit and for the comfort, they swap that out. 
All right, hardware laces and stitching on this boot. The stitching is like everything else from Carolina. It is exceptional. You're gonna find a loose stitch here or there as you would expect. It's boot production. Nothing's ever gonna be 100%. No matter where it falls in a price range, you can always find something as a defect, a personal defect, not a manufacturing defect but the stitching in this boot is exceptional. Hardware, when it comes to eyelids, Carolina always does a great job on eyelids. Machine speed laces, full pass through, washer back eyelids all the way through so you're not ripping these things out. And in the lace section, they're using the same heavy leather that you're gonna find on the outside, right in where they're attaching. Not only the eyelids, but they're also attaching the speed lace in the same manufacturing style. So things are gonna stay in place. It's gonna take a lot of energy to pull these things through. The boot is comp toe, so probably the one thing you wanna do is avoid chainsaw work. And if you are using this logger booth with chainsaws, you probably don't wanna do any cutting next to your legs or anything else, because if you glance off, if somebody else's glance is off, and you hit the comp toe, the thing about the comp toe with the leather, unlike the steel toe, is it's gonna keep pulling into it because it's a much softer material than steel. When a chainsaw hits steel, it just kinda of dances around. When a chainsaw hits comp toe, it just digs in and just keeps cutting. The same way if you were to take a saw saw to a piece of PVC pipe, chainsaw hits that comp toe, it's just gonna slice right through. All right, so let's talk about this overtime comfort system. Now, like I said, it's been a really long time since anybody tried to improve upon a logger boot from a work standpoint. Now, a lot of the cheaper companies are going to take logger boots and they're gonna throw soft, bouncy insoles inside there, but what they're not gonna do is they're not gonna fully redesign the whole boot in order to incorporate a soft footbed because they don't think you guys are gonna notice. They don't think you're actually using your boots for what they're intended to. And I can see that at certain price ranges, people aren't using the boots for what they're intended for. So the overtime comfort system is a mixture of several things. It's this super soft memory foam insole that is backed with Carolina dries on the top. So it's gonna wick moisture away. It's gonna help keep your foot a lot drier mixed with the nice heavy duty leather that's inside, which leather is a natural material, so it does help keep your foot comfortable all day. So you got the insole, but down into this midsole, what you're going to find is not only is it fully stitched down inside, but in the heel and arch section, they added the same material to the boot inside. So now you're stepping on two comfortable, bouncy, materials. Also adding that comfort is the actual midsole that they're using to construct the boot with. So you've got soft on the outside, soft on the inside. You're putting another layer of softness on top of there. Plus redesigning the heel cup, redesigning the Achilles section of the boot and the arch. They have redesigned the arch in this so they give you a proper arch support. So the arch without the insole in there, it feels like the arch is super high and just super sloppy, but because of the insole, it all ties it together. Everything about this boot comes together when you wear it as it was intended to be worn. So the elephant in the room is whether or not the boot is American made or is it imported. This boot is imported, but unlike most companies that kind of just buy time and space in foreign factories that build boots and they don't even really send forth the designs or anything else. They just let the foreign factories build the boots for them. Carolina controls every aspect of their boot construction when it comes to foreign manufacturing. And what does that mean? That means that the materials that are being used are all top grade materials. They're not cutting corners anywhere when it comes to the material construction of their boots. Eyelids, speed laces, leather, insoles, midsoles, soles themselves, all of that is controlled by Carolina. And, and by doing that, Carolina is ensuring that they are producing a really good boot no matter where it's made. All right, size and fit and all that stuff. 98.53 out of the box fits like a dream. Unlike most logger boots where it takes a little time to break them in, little time can be two weeks, three weeks, a month. This thing in the first week starts to feel outstanding, starts to shape and form your foot because 
of the overtime comfort system plus the leather plus just the way everything is put together the break-in period is cut in half from what a normal pair of loggers should now, be. Now size scale on these what you're going to find is that it's a regular Carolina size scale it goes 8 to 14 D's and double E's and you do not need to go bigger just because of the comp toe. Their D comp toe is going to give you enough room. Their double E comp toe is going to be really big. You guys who are in the double E, triple E size scale, depending on where you are in half sizes or full sizes, you might find that the double E is more than enough room if you're a triple E. Now, if you move into a four E or an H or even something like that, it might not be for you, but if you get the chance, try them on. Don't rule things out just because of how they're marked. Always put your boots on in the shop if you get the chance to try them on. So that's the 9853 from Carolina. Comp toe comfortable logger in this beautiful brown. Hey, if you're currently wearing any of the new logger boots from Carolina or even any of the older logger boots, whether it be the American or the imported, please comment below. Let guys know what you think about them. If you had good experiences, please comment below. If you've had bad experiences, also comment below. Hey, if you're interested in knowing more about the 9853, swing by the bootguy.com. I will have a nice little write up on it. I will have all the details from the manufacturer about the boot and I will have a couple links there. They'll make it a lot easier putting a pair of these on your feet. Hey, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. You know it really helps out. And also remember, you can follow me on Instagram all week long as I'm out there in the field working. I'm taking pictures of whatever boots I'm wearing, whatever boots my guys are wearing, or whatever it is we're doing. And we're just trying to promote a level of communication between all of us and you guys when it comes to making purchases on footwear and work gear. Hey guys, if you enjoy watching my videos that I produce for YouTube, if you enjoy following me on Instagram and Facebook, if you enjoy what I'm doing out there, remember, you can support me on Patreon. $12 a year, which is a dollar a month, really goes a long way in keeping the Boot Guy Reviews channel, website, and just everything I'm doing alive. Guys, if you're about to buy your first pair of loggers and you think the 9853 is just the boot for you, but you got questions about size, fit, durability, is it the right boot for your line of work? shoot me over a message on Instagram. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible with an answer to whatever your question might be. All right, I'm the boot guy. Thanks a lot for watching.